So something that we've been searching for for months is a lithium iron phosphate battery management system that is not 600 to $1,000. We want low temperature disconnect and basic other features so that our lithium iron phosphate cells do not die. And I bought this for $70 off of eBay and it has a Bluetooth module, it has a temperature sensor, it seemed like the most perfect BMS in the whole wide world. It's cheap, it has all features, it seems easy to set up. I have had the worst time of my life trying to make this work. Programming it was very difficult. Getting the right app from Chinese websites, not having a manual, trying to connect to the Bluetooth module. Also, this B positive terminal, you can't find out what it is and if you connect it to the main terminal of the battery, it shuts the whole thing down. Like, and also the default setting for low temperature disconnect was negative five degrees Celsius. How does that make any sense at all? So yeah, I'm gonna give up on this thing because I am so frustrated with this, but today we got a new BMS to test. So you guys know how much I like Dally BMSs and this is not sponsored. It's so funny, whenever I say something nice about a product, I have to tell you guys I'm not sponsored. Just so you guys know, I'm not full of crap. So this is a lithium iron phosphate BMS and it has the new upgraded low temperature disconnect. So that means that we have a BMS that takes five minutes to attach to a battery. We don't have to program anything. We don't have to connect anything to Bluetooth. We just hook up some cells and we have a battery. So this is absolutely incredible. And I love Dally BMS, but I have complained for ages that they do not have a low temp disconnect. If you try to charge up your batteries with solar and you have a single night that's cold, your whole battery bank is ruined, even if it's thousands and thousands of dollars. So, we finally have the BMS. We've been waiting like over a year for this to happen. So we're gonna test it on some brand new cells and see how well it works. And these are the new cells that we're gonna test. These are from AliExpress, but they're labeled as new cells. So they should not be grade B and they should test for full capacity. Oh my God, these are really nice. And check it out, these are the same cells that are in the Lion Energy battery. So we have a quality control sticker, which most grade B ones do not have. And then we have the barcode for the warranty. And you can also look up the sheet from the factory where it was manufactured to know, you know, different stats about the capacity and internal resistance. And this looks and feels brand new, but let's look at the other ones, make sure that they all look good. Guys, I'm getting excited. If we have a low temp cutoff BMS in these brand new cells for cheap, we have a amazing battery. This is so cool. For 105 amp hours, these are really small and lightweight. And each cell is rated for 336 watt hours and they weigh 2.07 kilograms each. So that means that the specific energy is 162 watt hours per kilogram. This is top of the line when it comes to specific energy. These are half the weight of a Sinopoly. And so the specific energy is good, but look at the volumetric density. Look at how small this thing is. It's tiny. 105 amp hours, you guys. I mean, let's compare it to a Sinopoly. Look at the profile right here, but it's like half the thickness. It is so small. And look at how nice that terminal looks. These are brand new. Remember the grade B cells, they were all scratched up. This is a brand new cell right here. And this package comes with bus bars. I had no idea. So it comes with these pretty small bus bars, but if you scratch them, you can see the copper. So these are tinned copper, which is great. And for this test, I'm gonna double up the bus bars so we can push more current. And what's really nice is they come with an extra bus bar. So if you wanna parallel or series connect this with another battery pack, you can. Some of them don't come with that. So that's really important actually. It's gonna look a little ugly, but we're gonna slap some electrical tape just for this test. But if you're making one of these packs at home, you need to make a case for it and push all the cells together. You do not want to over torque these. So tiny wrench and this is composite so it cannot short on any of the terminals. Also think about how long these machine screws are and how many threads you have available when you double up the bus bars. When you have a single bus bar, you have a lot more threads and you can tor torque it more. But when you have two, it just doesn't feel as good. So be very careful, do not over torque these terminals. And we have a battery in about 10 minutes. That was so easy. And before we add the BMS, let's test the voltage of all of these cells. 3.29, 3.29, 3.29, 3.29. So that's perfect. 
And on the BMS, we have a B negative and a P negative. So this goes out to our loads or chargers because this is a common port BMS. And then the B negative goes to the negative terminal of the battery. And because this BMS has to carry quite a bit of current, this one's rated at 80 amps, we need this flush with the battery terminal. So we want to put this on first. And if you build a case for the battery, you want to mount the BMS somewhere close so that the balance leads can go out to the terminals of the battery. But for us, we're just going to slap it on the side with some more tape. For being a hack job, this looks pretty good actually. Honestly, this already looks better than half of the batteries we buy on AliExpress. And this is the balance cable that we're going to use to connect the BMS to the individual cells. So the first problem I've noticed is that when you have these terminal connectors on top of here with two bus bars, there's just not that many threads to connect this to the terminal. So we're gonna only use one bus bar instead, which will actually add more fun to the test because we'll see if it overheats or not. And I feel less scared about torquing these things down. Now the balance leads are installed so we can plug it in. We have a cheap battery that you can build in 20 minutes with brand new cells and low temperature cutoff. This is incredible, you guys. We've been waiting so long for this moment to happen. Anybody could do that and you'll save $500. So first we're gonna connect a charger or a power supply. And so of course we're gonna do a capacity test, but we really need to figure out if this cold temperature sensor works. So while it's charging with this power supply, we're gonna make this really, really cold and we're gonna see if the current drops to zero when this hits freezing. So let me get something frozen and we'll do that. And all I can find in the freezer is these frozen bananas. So I have two bananas. <laughs> so we have two bananas on both sides of this sensor. Let's see if we can stop the charging. Usually it takes a little second until it gets cold. So the temperature sensor is in frozen banana water. So right now we're at negative three degrees Celsius and it is still charging. That's not good. Guys, why can't these things just work? Like it is such a simple temperature sensor system. And they, it'd just be so easy if they worked. All right, so I tried to troubleshoot it and I cannot figure it out. So we're gonna disconnect this BMS and watch the current drop to zero, see that? And now we're going to take this whole BMS and stick it in the freezer and see if the sensor for low temp cutoff is in here, which would be illogical, but who knows? We need to test it out. But this one is not giving us a low temperature cutoff. And they told me specifically in the email where I asked them and I mentioned in a previous video, that this will have low temp cutoff, but it doesn't. So what a freaking bummer. So the BMS is removed and I'm gonna stick it in the freezer for 20 minutes. So this battery is at negative four degrees Celsius and I cannot touch it. Negative 1.3 degrees Celsius, the sensor and this, we're still charging. This does not have low temp cutoff even though the data sheet says that it does. This is a big bummer. I am so not happy right now. It's crazy when we tell these companies to do something over and over and we have money ready to spend and they still do not listen. It drives me nuts. Everything else about these BMSs is perfect minus that. Why can't they just make it work? Why do they have the temperature sensor on here? What is this for? So I guess we're just gonna test the capacity of the cells and that's it because, God, I thought we were gonna have a full battery system in this video, but again, we are let down. By the way, I've done this test on other batteries and other BMSs and it works perfect. If you get that temperature sensor cold, it will disconnect instantly. How many times have I let you guys down from products not working as advertised? It's just been like half the time. They're complete failures, it's crazy. So we have 40 amps going into this battery. This is gonna be a fast charge. So this battery is practically fully charged, but I'm gonna wait till tomorrow because it's like 12 o'clock right now. And I am like in zombie mode. So we're gonna come back to this in the morning. So we wanna do a 0.2C test on 105 amp hour cells. So it should be around 21 amps and continuously we're doing 23 to 24, but that's good enough. We should get pretty accurate results. But this test will take four to five hours. So we're gonna come back to it. So the meter says 1,388 watt hours or 108 amp hours. But are these worth our time for buying? I still prefer the Calb cells that we tested last week. The reason why is that these terminals are very small and these will work just fine. But I noticed that during the test, 
these bus bars did get warm and you could double up the bus bars, but you don't have many threads to work with. So you'd have to probably get your own machine screw and then measure out the threads and get the right pitch and make it perfect for your specified application. And these cells do work really well and they're very small and very lightweight. And you could totally use them for mobile applications where weight and size matters. But I still like the Kelb and Sinopolis more, even though they're heavier and larger, they have their own case. You can just use some hose clamps and you're pretty much done. You have some large terminals and you can crank them down. I like that. With these, I'm just so scared that they're gonna get stripped out. But if weight and size matters, these are great. These are pretty much the same cells as all the other top quality prismatic drop-in lead acid replacement lithium iron phosphate batteries. So let me show you. Here's a Lion Energy battery and it has the same exact cells that we just tested, but these are rated for 90 amp hours. These are rated for 105. But I really don't want to take this battery apart, so I'm not sure if they're the exact same size. But this has an aluminum bus bar, and if you scratch it, it is pure aluminum. So I really do not like the bus bar options with these smaller aluminum cased cells. And look at how small the terminals are on this one. They're the same size as the one that we tested. They're just really tiny. And just to give you guys an idea of how small these cells are, look at the Kalb cells. These have the same exact rated capacity, but look at how massive these are. But because this has a nylon case, I can wrap some hose clamps around and we have a strong sturdy case built in. It's preferable to build a case around any home built battery just for safety reasons, but this is so much easier to work with. I mean, look at how large this terminal is compared to this one. These are just so tiny. And when I tested this battery, this bus bar did warm up. We could double up on it, but like I said, you're not gonna have as many threads and it just feels scary. For this one on all of our tests, these never warmed up. These are high quality, thick bus bars. Look at that. I mean, huge difference going on here. Like these are half the weight of Calb and Sino polys. So there's pros and cons. For me personally, if it's a stationary system, I'm going with Calb. And also for a mobile system, if you have the room, just get these ones because they're so much easier to work with. But these are new cells and they are matched. So I'm really happy that we got another good battery off of AliExpress. These two are the only ones on my website new match cells and that's it. But if you buy a listing on AliExpress and you get grade B cells, even if it says new, please let me know and also get your money back. And I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but we have a new BMS that we're gonna test in the next video. And this has low temperature disconnect and it actually works. So we're gonna put this through a whole bunch of tests and I think you guys are gonna love that video. But this BMS is not as easy as a DALI BMS. You actually have to program it with your phone through Bluetooth. I was so bummed that the DALI BMS did not work. If you guys think that I'm wrong, or if you can make a DALI BMS low temperature disconnect, please post a video. I would love to be proven wrong. I would hope you guys can find a way to make it work. In my experience, I can't. So thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.